Okay, today we're going to be talking about tuning the Clake, both the Clake Pro Lever and the Clake 2, because they're quite different to tune. What we're going to do for a start is disassemble the unit and then talk about how it works, because once you know something, how something works, it's going to make it a lot easier to understand tuning of it. So we'll start with the Clake 2 and we remove the shear pin. Now this is very important because you can't fold the lever out, it hits the shear pin. So don't try to remove it. If you try to remove the lever without removing the shear pin, you could break the shear pin off. Okay, with the shear pin removed, we're able to fold the levers out and note that folds the top plastic cover off and that holds the central pin in. There is no E-clip underneath. So you just simply push that up and then the whole lever set will come out. Okay, now what we'll do is we'll remove the slave cylinder and this is a dual control unit. If this wasn't a dual control unit, it would just have a simple blanking plate over the back of it. But being a dual control unit, we'll remove this and that's a uh, 5mm Allen key there and then there's three 2.5mm button head screws that hold it on. Okay, so remove those. Okay, then this unit just simply pulls away and then that exposes the rockers. Now we'll also take off this front Teflon shield and this just slides in. So once you've got it all assembled, you simply slide that in, then this goes in place and that holds that in place. Okay, see this pin here, that's the clutch actuating pin and this is a clutch rocker. It's very important to make sure that when you reassemble it, that they're properly connected. See how that's lifted out there? And then we just make sure that that's in place before we put the lever set back on. Now once the um, slave cylinder or the end housing backing plate is on, that can't come off. But as long as it's off, it can jump out of position. So it's very important to make sure it stays in position. Okay, first of all we remove this bolt here, which in the case of a pro lever is simply a blanking bolt. This is a 4mm Allen key. And then we can just simply hold the clake, or it could be mounted on a bike when you're doing it, either way, and you just fold it away from the handlebars. Like so, that's one click and two clicks, which takes off the brake arm. One click, two click, and that takes the brake arm off, which is this little arm here. There's something to note on the clake is that it only has one E-clip on the main pivot pin. And underneath, you'll note that there is no E-clip, and this is normal. The actual pin is held in place by the plastic top cover. And for this reason, it's possible with no tools to remove the main pin and the lever set. So you simply push the pin up and then pull it out like so. Okay, now just to, to run you through the, the various rockers and functions of the clake, the top rocker here with this little bearing on it is the rear brake, okay? And you can see that plunging down there. So as the cam is rotated around the main pivot point, that acts on that roller there and then pushes on the brake. And this bearing here is so that the slave cylinder, there's a little plunger in the slave cylinder that actually acts on, on that little bearing. Okay, then the next rocker down, as we said, is the uh, clutch one. And again, it's got a roller just there that the cam runs on and that just simply actuates that. And then the last one, and what I'll do is I'll fold the clutch uh, rocker out of the way so that you can see. This is a clutch assist system. Now, this actuates a spring. And what it does is it has a reverse profile cam and that stores energy. So when the lever is being released, it stores the energy and then it returns it when you try to pull it in, which helps you pull it in. Okay, now <clears throat> this clutch assist spring, the whole system basically makes the clutch lighter to use. So in summary, there are three rockers in the clake. The top one, as in when the unit's mounted on the bike, is the rear brake, which is that one. The centre one is the clutch, and the lower one is what we call the clutch assist, which acts on a spring. So as far as tuning goes, we'll start with the clake two, because as I mentioned before, the tuning of the different lever sets is quite different. Okay, so we separate the levers, we just simply fold them out and away from each other. Then there's three plastic shims, which are Teflon, and we'll pull those off. Then what you've got 
is the very top can, and see when, we're, when these are, are reassembled, is the rear brake cam, the centre cam is the clutch cam, and the bottom cam is the clutch assist cam. Okay, so what we've got here is a brake cam, and you'll notice the numbers on that are 4A2. Now, the 4 refers to where, we, we only with a clake 2, it's different than a pro lever, but with a clake 2, the 4 positions the lever, and that is the most outermost position, but it's also the most standard position we have. Okay, as we said, the 4 is the standard and also the outermost position of the lever, and if you see there's a 3, a 2 and a 1. Now, all they simply do is move the lever in 2 degrees each. So for every number, it'll, the lever comes in 2 degrees. So the 3A2 is exactly the same brake profile, but the lever will sit 2 degrees close to the bars. The 2A2 will sit 4 degrees close to the bars than the 4. And the 1A2 will sit 6 degrees close to the bars. So basically the first number on the brake cam determines where the lever sits. And just roughly speaking, I mean that's standard, that's a 4, and a 3 would be something like that, and a 2 would be something like that, and a 1 would be something like that. So it just brings the lever in close to the bars. Really it's just there for people with small hands. Okay, now the last number in the series, in this case is a 2, and what this refers to is the actual angle of the profile of the cam, and in this case that refers to the leverage. So the higher the number, the less the leverage, the lower the number, the greater of lever the leverage. Now what this translates to is if you want a soft lever with lots of leverage, you should go for a low last number. And if you want the lever to be firmer, then overall you go for a higher last number. Now, in the case of most setups for Clake 2 lever sets, they will come with a 4A2 as standard, and then you will get a 4A1 and a 4A3 in the kit, which will allow you to soften the lever or firm it up. Okay, now if you put the cams together, you can actually see the difference in the angles. It's fairly subtle between these. Um, we've certainly, I'll show you some more drastic ones later. Now we'll uh, look at the letter that goes in between the two numbers. And what this refers to is the initial ramp up of the actual profile of the cam. And you'll notice on the first one, which is a 4A2, it's a very linear relationship. So it's almost a straight line, which means as the lever's pulled in, the caliper will be actuated very evenly. Okay, now th this is a 4B2, and although it looks the same as a 4A2, it has slightly more initial ramp on it. Okay, now we're going to look at the 4C2, and if you look at the ramp angle, you'll notice that there's a quite noticeable bump at the start. And what this does is it allows to take up any hydraulic play or mechanical play in the caliper. So th this ramp here will help take up any hydraulic or mechanical play in the brake system and bring the brake on sooner. Okay, now we're looking at the 4D2, which actually has a more severe initial ramp up in the cam profile. Okay, now we put the 4A2, B2, C2 and D2 together so that you can get an idea of what's happening. Now, if you notice, the actual end point is the same. So, once you've got the lever to the bars to a certain point, it's actually going to feel the same. But how it gets there is different. One comes on earlier and quicker, which is the D, and down to the most linear one, which is the A. This is just an example to show you the extremes. This is a 4A0, and if we remove that, if you look down underneath, you'll see the cam is a 4A7. So you can see the difference in the ramp angles between the two. Okay, so the second thing is the letter, and this relates to the actual start of the profile, and the Letter A is the least, it's the most linear, and then the letter D is the most aggressive start on the profile, with the overall ratio always ending up the same. And the last number is basically the leverage ratio. So if you want to have a soft feeling lever with lots of leverage, you go for a lower number, and in that case the first cam shown there is a, a zero, 
and then if you want the least leverage, so the firmest lever, you go to the higher number and that's a 7 shown there. Okay, now the second cam down in the group of three cams on the levers is the clutch cam. And this has a number first, followed by a letter. In this case, it's a 6A. And note that it's a capital A because we actually have two series. We have a small lowercase a and a capital A. Okay, now it's really important to just change one cam at a time so that you can't confuse them. Also though, to note, the clutch cam has a 12 millimeter hole in it and that goes to the clutch assist as well, whereas the brake is 13, so it's very hard to get those confused. Okay, now these are all clutch cams, and these are all A cams, and they start from one and go up to eight. Now, you'll note that there's a capital A and a lowercase a, and the series starts with the um, uppercase a, and then the next one along is the next number in the lowercase a, and then the same number, with a, a capital. So these are basically a halfway point. Now with the clutch cams, and you might be able to see from the difference between the lift on the 1A, if you went to the 8A, there's quite a marked difference. So the higher the number, the higher the lift in the clutch cam, and therefore at any given point, the more clutch disengagement you'll get once the lever's pulled in. Now, as well as this, the clutch lever can be brought in by approximately 10 millimetres for people with smaller hands. And this is designated by the letter B. So there's exactly the same series with uppercase and lowercase, but they're B cams. So in this case we're looking at a 1B, and that will bring the clutch lever in approximately 10 millimetre closer to the bars. Okay, now with the bottom cam, it's the clutch assist cam. Now this is the cam that operates against the spring, so if you note, it's a reverse profile. As that roller is going up, this one goes over centre and then rolls down. And it's that that helps you pull the clutch in. So the steeper the angle here, the more assistance it's going to give you on the clutch. And in this case, there's two numbers and then a letter. Now, the first number, denotes where the assistance starts. Now, one is the earliest start, and this is pretty much a standard start. A two starts the assistance two degrees later. And what that means is if you see this profile here, basically that's a neutral section, so you're not getting any assistance initially. And if it's a one and or a two, you've got two degrees more of the neutral area on a two. This is with your first number. Okay, now the second number refers to the angle or the amount of assistance given. So in this case we've got a 2 here and a 3 there and you should be able to see the difference in the angle between the two. Now at the, after the two numbers you'll see there's a letter, okay, and this letter denotes, as we've discussed before with the clutch, where the lever sits in relation to the bars the B sitting 10 mil closer to the bars than the A. Now it's very important that if you change a clutch cam to a B cam, you must run a B assist cam. With the assist cams, you'll note there's actually, after the two numbers, there's a letter. And again, with this is the same as the clutch. With the clutch, the B cam brings the lever in 10 mil closer to the bars than the A cam. Now, with the assist cams, you must run a B assist cam if you're running a B clutch cam, so that the forces align. To change the cams, you simply need a 2.5 mil Allen key, and we put that in there. It takes a fair bit of force, because they need to be done up nice and tight. And then you'll find the cam will just simply, you've just got to work it off, they can be a little bit tight. Okay, now when installing a cam, it's very important to use Loctite. Preferably low strength, and we're using triple two here. So we simply put the cam back on. Now, it is also vital to make sure, see that the cam's not seated properly there? Make sure that it's seated properly. And I actually like to give it a tap with a plastic hammer to make sure that it's down properly. Again, very important to use Loctite, preferably low strength. Just a little bit on the thread. Try not to get any on the countersink area because it's such a large surface area. It'll lock the, the screw in place too much. Okay, 
and then we simply put this in and it is very important to do this up nice and tight. One thing to watch on the brake bearing is that the inner needle roller section can actually fall out. So just make sure that it's in position and always make sure it's well greased and I like to use white lithium grease. Now with both the Pro Lever and the Clank 2, I actually don't recommend going for the B cams or closer cams for the brake unless you've got really small hands because you do need the lever travel and if you bring the levers in too close you won't have enough travel. Now if you want more assistance on tuning the Clank levers, either the Pro Lever or the Clank 2, please refer to our website.